So this is the reality of van life. A hundred thousand dollar vehicle parked in the 90 degree heat, running their generator with all their window covers on in the middle of the day in a public parking lot that they cannot park at night. That's a hundred thousand dollars, not including gas that they're burning right now for that generator, not including maintenance, not including depreciation. And they're in a public parking lot that they can't sleep all night. You have to be very wise in how you allocate money and understand that what's the difference between that and a regular car? Money and you can stand up. There's some more luxuries, but you still can't sleep in this parking lot at night. And, you know, you're even less stealth and you're even less likely to get ahead financially for most people. Some people can afford that. Most people cannot afford to waste a hundred grand. So I just think about this as someone who's lived full time on the road out of the car that they owned when I had a house. And even now that I have a home base, I could put an RV there that's a class B, but I figure that's a hundred thousand dollars that's just gonna sit there. I could park it on my property at night, but then where am I gonna travel every day of a class B? That's a 20 foot Travato. Do you want to drive that every day, all day for the rest of your life? Something to think about, okay? So the van life has this duality, this good and bad. Just like everything, there's pros and cons. Initially, there may be an allure that uh, buying a van, buying a Class B, or just the nomadic life is all pros. It's it's the best but everything has cons, everything has negatives, everything has consequences. So when it comes to van life and the nomadic life, but we're focusing mainly on van life, the, the major negatives are the cost and parking. The cost of a van, even if it wasn't an official Class B, even if it wasn't a, an official RV, the cost of a brand new van nowadays is about 50 grand. And the cost of the average Class B is about a hundred grand. So you may think that you're saving on rent or housing, but you're paying almost housing prices just to buy a vehicle. And a van, uh, whether an official RV or just a regular van that you're going to build out, is not that fuel efficient. Um, and it's questionable if you want to drive it 24-7, 365. So are you going to have another vehicle? And then the other bad part about van life is you still need somewhere to park. I could tell you from my experience of five years on the road, that becomes the biggest issue over time. Because you get tired of moving from gym parking lots to truck stops to rest areas, etc. And you're like always getting chased around. And when you have a van and definitely a class B, there's more eyes on you because it's obvious of what you're doing and the stealth factor goes down. So what are you really getting? What's the good out of van life? The good is anything nomadic is mobile, okay? Um, the good is you can fully stand up in a van and it's more of a home, it's a little bit more privacy than a regular car. Uh, the good is that a, a Class B will probably hold its value a little bit more than, than most vehicles in, in some regard, you know, but it all depends how much you drive it and how much you use it. You know, it's just like anything, you know, how, how good of upkeep you do to the vehicle, but you know, I don't know. When I weigh the pros and cons, and I currently own an RV lot, I could buy a Class B, and I think about it. But then I say to myself, if I buy a van or a Class B, I'm still going to have two vehicles. I don't think I would only want to drive a Class B. Uh, I always look at that, too. Even though I currently don't do it, I always have it in my back pocket. If I uh, got laid off or if I needed extra income, I could DoorDash, Uber, Instacart in a regular car, which I've done before which is another source of income. You eliminate that when you have a van. I'm allocating more of my net worth 
to a van right which on average is going to go down in value whether class b or whatever even if it retains its value okay so i have two vehicles i eliminate a source of revenue with ride share i increase my allocation towards depreciating assets if i buy a class b or van and i you know you would still need somewhere to park i mean i have the the spot to park because i have a place where i could our own property i could legally park an rv but those are kind of like the good and the bad. You know, if I didn't own a property that could you could legally park an RV, whether a house or RV lot, you know, then, then it becomes more questionable if you get a full-time RV out of a van. Um, why? You know, because you're going to have gas. You're going to be always moving around. you got to think about your long-term future. If you're going to pay campground fees, that's just as much as rent plus the van. It's tough. You know, I see the reason why people go van life. Um a lot of it's tied into why I went to the nomadic life, flexibility, mobility. But the reason I didn't buy a van or an RV when I started the nomadic life was the upfront cost you'll probably never recoup. You know, if you buy a van and you spend 50 or 100K, how long is it going to take for you to save that? Probably most people will never save that. Then even if you buy a new vehicle, a 30 40 grand hybrid or something most people will never save that amount of money living on the road so a lot of people in my experience not in judgment just observation because everyone should do what they want in my experience most people end up spending more on the road because actually mobility hurts them they don't stay planted in an area to grow their career they bounce around they become more of an isolationist less social skills and they're hurting their long-term future. Is it fun? It, it can be, uh, but it does come to a head long-term. Short-term, it's fun. Long-term, you start to hit this wall, physically, mentally, emotionally, and financially. Long-term, and that's the problem in, in life, all of us. I mean, I, I always struggle with that. You know, I, as a middle-aged man now, I, I see the, uh, the short-term and the long-term. A, a lot of things you do like short-term, because it's more instant gratification, there's less commitment, there's less pain, there's less discipline. But eventually, that short-term happiness comes into long-term pain. Because long-term, you actually end up better when you went through the pain of short-term discipline. So again, everyone's circumstance is different. I don't want to make a video negative on van life. I don't want to make a negative... Uh, I don't want to make... Um, an overwhelmingly negative video on van life. I don't want to make an overwhelmingly positive video on van life. I want to share the good and the bad, the balanced statement. Everyone has their individual circumstance, financially, emotionally, physically, but it's not one or the other. You know, no matter how much you try to force yourself to believe either the good or the bad, no matter how much you force yourself there's both and that's the reality of life nothing's perfect nothing's perfect and you have to honestly look at your situation the good and the bad and think about the consequences short term and long term and then you know just try to make the best decision and we don't always make the right decision you know it's tough and we don't always know if we made the right decision short term sometimes it takes a while sometimes you may think you may made the right decision short term then long term you get burnt Sometimes you think you made the wrong decision short term, but long term you get rewarded. Everything has a balance, you know, but, you know, you try to use as much wisdom as possible. Uh, and not just your gut, not just your emotions, but also science. Also living below your means, which you have to measure through science, your net worth versus the cost of the vehicle. Uh, so it's, it's balance of both, you know, your gut instincts and your data, both. Um, but either way, I just want to make a video based off my experience, uh, try to be a balanced perspective, and hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, click the thumbs up, share the video, subscribe, uh, become a member, and I thank you with gratitude in my heart. Thank you.